Good evening. Uh, time having arrived, I call this meeting of the Brockton uh, Public Schools Policy Subcommittee to order. Uh, first, I need to read the information regarding the uh, suspended rules. So uh, due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and state of emergency on March 12, 2020, Governor Baker issued an executive order temporarily suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL chapter 30A section 20, pursuant to the order, public bodies are temporarily relieved from the open meeting laws requirements that meetings be held in public places, open and physically accessible to the public, so long as measures are taken to ensure public access to the body's deliberations through adequate alternative means. This meeting will be held and accessible to the public via Brockton Community Access, Brockton Public Schools website, um, YouTube and Comcast Channel 12. The public can also access this meeting um, via youtube.com, the Brockton channels. First order of business is a roll call vote to vote to go and, and uh, I apologize here. Got it right in front of me. All right, roll call vote to operate the meeting under the revised uh, open meeting law. Um, the chair, Mr. Sullivan. Yes. Uh, Vice chair, Ms. myself, yes. Uh, Ms. Asak. Yes. Um, Ms. Mendez. <laughs> Mr. Minicello. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. And Superintendent Thomas. Yes. All right. Uh, next, we also need to do a separate roll call to establish a quorum. So I will call it again. Uh, the chair, Mr. Uh, Mayor Sullivan. Yes. Um, and I'm the vice chair voting yes. Ms. Asak. Yes. Ms. Mendez. Mr. Minicello. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. Superintendent Thomas. Yes. All right, thank you all. Um, so this evening's policy subcommittee committee meeting agenda, um, we have four items to discuss this evening. Um, our grading, Brockton High School grading policy, uh, middle school grading policy, and the elementary school grading policy as well, and then we'll have time for any new business. Um, so I will turn it over to the superintendent. Thank you. So I'm going to take one and two together. And my apologies that um, the B should have left, been left off. This is high school grading policy. This, so this would include the Key Center, the Huntington School, and also uh, Edison Academy. So, uh, so it's the high school grading policy and the middle school grading policy will actually be the same, um, 6 to 12. So I'm, I'm going to try to make this as, you know, as short as I can. So it's um, obviously so we can all understand. Um, so the last day of school before the closure was March 12th. So right now we would um, close grades as of that day, because as you know, between, um, between March 12th and the current time, and, and, and when working on uh, adjustments to the new MOA and the new guidance came out from the Department of Ed Friday. So we're working on moving forward in, as we go into term four. But for term three, the way we're gonna close it out. So the term will end on March 12th. And if a student in grades six to 12 uh, in the family are happy with the grade that they had at that time, they could keep that grade. If a student wants to improve that grade, we would, the teachers would provide makeup work and the, the grade could only be improved, it could not go down. So a student could improve their grade by doing makeup work between March, between now and we would have a closing date of May 22nd. Um, and then by May 22nd, if a, choose, a student chooses to do the makeup work, that work would have to be submitted by the teacher. And that work, again, could only improve a student's grade uh, and the grade would not be able to, um, the grade would not go down. And uh, something else I wanna mention is that um, if a student was failing at that time, uh, they still have the opportunity to make the work up um, and if they, are, if they have been putting in effort between the closing and now, um, we are not, my proposal to the, the committee 
um, is that we do not fail any students. We would make those grades incomplete. Um, and those would students obviously that we would spend time um, putting into summer programs, really looking at things uh, differently and how we help and assist these students. But at this time, I don't think um, it's fair to give anybody a failing grade for either term three or term four. Uh, if a student is for some reason not engaging in the remote learning, uh, or they, if they were failing um, term three and we haven't been able to engage them, uh, then they would get an incomplete for term three. Uh, and there'd be no automatic failures. As you know, there is an attendance policy at, at the high school. If a student has four unexcused absences, they would fail. Um, if those four absences became, became, were before May 12th, we are still not gonna fail those students. Uh, again, if the students are not working and for some reason are not getting credit for the work they're doing online, uh, that would turn into an incomplete rather than a failure. And again, a student could keep the grade they, they had on March 12th, which was about just over the halfway point of the term. Um, and they would, if they want to improve that grade, they could by doing makeup work and they would have until May 22nd to make that work up and, and get a better grade. So that's the way we're looking at term three for grades six to 12. Um, sorry to interrupt. Ms. Mendez is trying to join the meeting. If BCA can let her in. There she is. I see her coming. <clears throat> I have a question. Mr. Minicello. Do we have any idea, um, uh, Mr. Superintendent, in terms of the participation or attendance of our students with regard to the work um, that's been issued either you know, online or uh, paper handouts. So we know how many, uh, we're getting that number from the, we have the number that we can look at how many students are engaged online and logging into Clever. Um, we're getting the number from the principals are getting us a report on um, the engagement the, the, the students have had with the teachers where it hasn't been a login to one of our online platforms. Um, so I, Ethan can, I think Ethan is with us. He can jump in um, and give us the hard online login number. Uh, and then we will be getting uh, the numbers from the principals this week to, to actually see how many else are engaging with their, with their um, teachers through email, through phone calls, uh, stuff that you can't track online. I don't know if Ethan's with us. Says he is, but I don't know. Yeah. Oh, there I'm is. here. I'm just trying to uh, log in and get the uh, the numbers from Clever. Uh, Ethan, you know you have to start with a joke. You know that, don't you? <laughs> we need that now more than ever. Exactly. I don't know. You, you, <laughs> so you what? Come for, you come. You come with the joke when we don't need it. Now. We okay. Need it. <laughs> I, I I have a very bad joke told poorly for you. Perfect. Okay. Uh, what do you call a hippie's wife? Mississippi. Ah, uh, good one. Actually, that's cute. That's clean and cute. Good job, Ethan. I like it. That was good. Yeah. Yeah, I like that one. That was yeah. really cute. <laughs> Judy can be in church. That's so clean, Ethan. That's right. Good. Yeah, uh -huh. I, that was really cute. I like that. I even laughed. Thank you. Mission accomplished. <laughs> so <laughs> he never lets me down. <laughs> <laughs> so I can tell you for the last 28 days, we've had 11,000 um, unique users over the past 28 days. So 11,000 students logged in. That's good. And 1,000 teachers logged into Clever, which is also good. Yeah. Um, it, it means that 67.8% of our students at some point logged in and 51.1% of our students logged in. <laughs> we uh, recently set our record of 5,505 kids logging in on Monday and I don't yet have the updated uh, information for today. 
So that's our highest number by about 500 students. But I can't tell you exactly which those students are, but as Mike said, the, the principals can. So I, I, I spoke to um, the principal of the Davis School today. I spoke to uh, principal of East, um, and I talked to the principal of West. Um, they have been up around 80. 80% of students have been, in, uh, they've been engaging either through, you know, there's been Clever, there's been the Zoom, there's been phone calls. Um, so I'll get the rest of the numbers from, um, from the other principals. Um, but that's, we're ho it looks like it's been, um, again, just through every mechanism, through emails, uh, Zoom, Teams, um, you know, Clever, um, phone calls, um, is those three schools have reported close to 80%. And again, we're now we're getting lists together um, and targeting obviously students that have not been engaged and um, figuring out what's going on and how much support. And Sharon's been spending a lot of time on that um, because you know obviously if they're not engaged, we got to figure out how we can assist the family and what's going on at home that we can assist more um, in this obviously difficult time. So. Um, it's important for us to know those numbers. Oh, good. So you are trying to identify those that are not participating or showing participation. Absolutely. And then and that was something that was uh, big in the um, MOA with the um, with the uh, the BEA and with the the paras, the MTAs, um, that you know, the number one thing is to engage students and then track who's not participating, make sure we're getting those names directly to the principals and the assistant principals. And it's their job then to, you know, call the homes. Um, that's why it was really important to get the Brockton Public School cell phones uh, in the hands of the principals early on uh, to be able to make all those calls and, and try to find out why the students are not engaged and do we need to line them up with uh, adjustment counselors. We also, if you remember, we got uh, cell phones into the hands of 15 adjustment counselors as a, um, as a team and they're also providing support. So you're right, that's the most, and that, I think that's pretty much our most, right now I know the education piece is very important, but the, the number one piece is making sure those students get the support, um, identifying who they are and supporting them. Okay, I, I guess a, a second part to that is um, in trying to anticipate what the uh, fall is gonna be like, you know, in terms of a, a, an opening, um, I think there's going to have to be some thought, maybe there already is thought about um, if in fact we cannot you know, open schools that we are going to have to do this, you know, online classes, so to speak. Um, so I think maybe we need to have, you know, a, a plan A and a plan B. And, and even if um, we do get to open, you know, let's just use the high school as an example you might not be able to have every day, you know, the entire high school body. It might only be, you know, perhaps, you know, one grade at a time, one grade per day, but then those other days, perhaps the other uh, uh, grades need to be, you know, doing online learning for those days. I, I don't know how it's going to look or how it's going to work, but I, I think there needs to be preparation, if possible, anticipating some sort of a continuation and I don't like we, we don't know what it's going to look like, but if in fact you know there has to be online learning that we ensure based on your data now with the help of like you said the pairs and the MTAs identifying these kids and making sure all these kids have access to the internet for some online type of curriculum. If if in fact you know the start of school is similar to the way things are now because the private school kids like my 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 niece. It goes to a private school where, um, in fact, Kim Gibson husband is, is one of her teachers and they are online four hours a day with their school every day in the morning and in the afternoons, they are doing sort of, you know, the work um, in the afternoon. So those, those schools are, you know, doing the curriculum that needs to be done at you know, a certain grade level. So I think that, you know, again, it's a smaller scale, but, I think we have to be somewhat prepared if in fact there is a continuation of this into the fall. 
you know. So. And that, and that's why it's going to be so important to keep some of that money, you know, that 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 money, you know, if we have to continue this, uh, you know, ha and having the uh, you know, infrastructure, the the actual, you know, units and the support to support, you know, a, a sixteen thousand plus. What's our number now, Mike, for our student body? About so, sixteen eight. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's round it off to seventeen thousand kids. I mean, that's that's a big undertaking. So, you know, you can see where having some of that money that's not being used to put into the infrastructure in terms of getting the capacity to be able to handle something like that, all the do dollars are going to matter. So. Absolutely. And, and again, I, I agree 100%, Mr. Minichello, and that's where the Department of Ed has, has to come through with also oh, yeah. clear guidelines of what every district's doing. And I think... Uh, again, as we've spoken about this, as you know, what we've done to the to transfer, I mean, to the uh, technology budget over the last ten years has been, you know, you know, we'll be cut every year because we just yeah, robbing Peter to pay Paul. Yeah, we would mm -hmm. save in what's in the classroom. So, mm -hmm. as you know, none of you know, we would we're not we would not set up for online learning at all. Uh, right. We're not a Google Classroom district. We're not, but I think we, you know, in a in a something that would take pretty much a year and a year and a half to the plan. We've we've jumped pretty quickly to, to change. So that's the one benefit of, you know, being forced to do this quickly and with, you know, very few resources and a lack of, um, a lack of not only the, um, the devices to give out because we're not one-to-one, -one, but also the lack of the internet access that is out there for, uh, and the, the, the Department of Ed has to step up with that as well as to provide more hotspots for families that need the internet. Yeah. But you're hundred percent right because I believe when you do start school back, it's, you know, with 4,000 kids at a school, it's going to have to be done in a very safe way. And you're right. Some days kids could be online. Some days kids could be in school. And that's the way we're going to have. And, and we are yeah. starting to plan for that. Yeah, I, I just don't think you can pack the whole student body, 4,000, let's just call it 4,000 kids, you know, on every day, you know, at once. You, you and I know how it was banging each other's shoulders into each other, you know, in, in the core, cutting cutting through when we were kids it's the same way now so yeah. so maybe on the when is your next uh, i guess conference call with um you know, the powers that be that, that that you need to express this you know in, in, in anticipation of a continuation of this situation well the last call last thursday when um he, they did say that they now that they've got the guidance out to get us through the rest of the year um that they have a committee together and um, we're part of that as the urban superintendents um, to basically start thinking about the fall. Obviously, they're waiting. They'll see what guidelines are, but they're also, we said, E, thanks to Ethan. He did a great job filling out the survey of our technology needs. Mm -hmm. So the Department of Ed is claiming they're going to help us with that, um, not only with devices, but for internet access. So let's hope that that comes through. Actually, our friend Trip Jones has been hired by the Department of Ed to lead this technology, um, you know, crusade. And so I spoke to Tripp, uh, uh, Ethan spoke to him, I spoke to him, Aldo spoke to him, um, and said Brockton is, is on the top of his list to try to get us what we need. And obviously I told him uh, first and foremost is helping families get internet connection. And second would be we need more devices because we did pass out 6,000 um, but again, that's one to, one for each family, and it, it could be a family of three or four. And I said, Trip, that's just not enough. I mean, we really would like the state to provide us with another six thousand, and um, to be able to get into the hands of kids. So, um, but you're hundred percent right. But I think they are starting to move in that direction to come up with a plan as we are. Great, thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Um, just a question, and and. Um, first, I 100% agree with, with Mr. Minicello that we have to have a, a backup plan in case we can't fully open school in September and operate as we normally have. Um, and, and I know the superintendent and I had had a conversation in early April about, you know, once we have gone through this, we can kind of rewind the tape a little bit and look at what went well and what didn't go so well and how we could make it better and, and how we could develop a plan for this sort of thing you know, with what we've learned here. So, um, but I was just curious, is there any worry and, and really the superintendent or Ethan, if you're still with us, that 
and and Mike, you and I talked about right that we weren't going to have any students failing, and it makes sense. But my, is there any worry or is there any uh, plan for if we have students who know that they're not going to fail and just don't engage at all? And, and no, I said that's where I, that's where they get the incomplete. Okay. Um, so they're not getting a failing grade, but they are getting an incomplete. And the reason for that would be not, not engaging at all. Um, and that's the kids that obviously we know, uh, and we, and I think it was Tom earlier that asked about a summer program. Those are the kids that are going to have to, going to have to engage in a summer program, um, to, you know, those are the, and also there are other kids that will pass that will also need a summer program, but the kids right. who get the incomplete are going to have to go into a summer program developed by us. And again, part of that could be a physical presence in, in a program. And, and part of that would be online, uh, which would obviously be like a pilot program for what, what the fall could look like. But those would definitely students that we would mandate to be involved in a summer program if they wanted to, again, um, make sure that they can move towards a passing grade. Right. Okay. All right. Like I said, I just wanted to make sure that it, you know, uh, I didn't want to take the chance that we have some kids that just disengage completely if they feel like, well, I can't fail. So, um, but it sounds like we've got a plan in place and, and we can mandate them to attend a summer program, which losing my summer would be motivate motivation enough for me. That's for sure. <laughs> um, okay. Any other um, questions or comments? Uh, Ms. Sullivan. I mean, Miss Sullivan, I'm sorry. I'm looking at I'm looking at Miss Azak <laughs> and saying Mrs. Sullivan, Miss Azak. Um, I just I just wanted to see if we can get an update on um, as far as the seniors, the process that they're taking as far as exiting BHS, and then how about our juniors that are going to be seniors? What what measures are we taking? Where I think they're they're impacted right now, given you have the graduating class and then you have your incoming class of seniors. And they're all very concerned. Um, you know, it is an unknown right now. No one really knows. Um, we're really pretty much taking it week by week, but they just wanted some kind of updates if we have any. So that's why I let me. Can I fin? I want to finish the tr the, the the grading, okay. which will obviously play into um, the seniors and the juniors. Because so a lot of them. Well, I was going to say a lot of them aren't able to take the. Um, SAT because I believe June I could be wrong but I know May was postponed and I believe June um, might have been postponed I'm not sure if someone can clarify that so that a lot of them have that concern where they're not able to take the SAT um, especially going in as seniors they're going to need that for their you know college applications yeah so I mean the one silver lining is that everybody in the country is in this position it's not just Brockton. So this colleges have to take this into consideration. They're going to have to take into consideration that there's been one or two or three less chances for a student to take the SATs. Um, the state's going to have to take into consideration, um, you know, what, what happens in the beginning of next year to Mr. Minicello's point is that how much is the first three months, four months of the year is going to be catching kids up from you know, from what they've missed the last three and a half months of school. So that's a huge part and that's our job to make sure we do that. Um, and that's why I think it was very important that you allowed us to add edgenuity um, to allow all students to take that. Cause I think a lot, um, a lot of our high school students are um, getting involved in that. And that's something we will keep open for kids through the summer um, to help sharpen their skills and, um, it's something we'll keep over, open next year for them too, is, is students that want to go in above and beyond the classes they're taking. And under the new guidelines, uh, we have to now start teaching power standards, which were selected by the Department of Ed. So basically under those, so we can start teaching new, new materials. And it was the power standards selected by the Department of Education, uh, which we will move to, you know, start teaching those to, again, is supposed to help kids prepare for next year. But we'll also have to work directly case by case with parents who feel like they need to either hold their child back. Um, to, you know, again, that's those are all case by case. If uh, you know, if a parent feels that you know, I, I really think my child needs to be held back in the previous grade, um, 
you know, that all has to be looked at. There's no question. But the only benefit of this is for the colleges is that every state is in the same boat. Um, and the colleges have to take that into consideration for the juniors and seniors, all, pretty much all high school kids. Okay. And I also had some parents reach out asking about um, possible homeschooling, um, especially where we don't know what to expect the next few months. They're just trying to prepare themselves and possibly um, taking that approach for probably the first semester, if that's possible. Um, well, they would they would have to request home teaching, um, homeschooling. They would be on their own to submit a curriculum to us, which has to be approved. And they, you know, uh, they would be the ones uh, they would, you know, pretty much not be members of the Brockton Public Schools. They would be homeschooled. And then there's home teaching uh, where they request home teaching. And then they they would be on the Edgenuity program. They would take their classes through Edgenuity. Okay, and I thank expect you. there'd be a handful of kids in that position as well. Yeah, I know a lot of them are, are thinking about it, um, especially where there's the unknown right now. So they're just looking at different different Absolutely. avenues that they might be able to approach. Absolutely. So does anybody have any questions about six to 12 term three? Uh, any concerns about that? And I'll, I'll move to term four, which is a quick explanation. All right, so... Our proposal for term four, which we would hope we would be starting on March 4th and it would go to June 19th, um, which is three days before the end of the school year. The last three days of the school year, we would basically want kids to have some fun virtually with their teachers and not have to worry about doing a ton of work online. So the last three days, which is the 22nd, 23rd and 24th, you know, would be fun, engaging activities um, so we would end the term on the 19th. And the way we're looking at um, term four, it would be credit or no credit. Um, if a student is working and engaged and doing the work that the teacher is asking, um, they would get credit. And then that would translate into the teacher giving that student um, the highest grade that they had from the first three terms. So if I was a, if I was a student who had an A, um, term one, and then I engaged in the, with the work with the teacher, term four, did my work. Um, the teacher said, oh, you know what, you're getting credit for term four. Um, now I'm giving you automatically giving you the highest grade you had, and that was an A term one. Um, and that's how we would factor um, the year grade. So basically, um, we're not punishing any kids. Um, I think it works for kids at every level and it's the most fair way we can do it. Um, if this, again, student's not engaged, um, not doing any work, then we would obviously have to, again, give them no credit and give them an incomplete and then engage them in summer programs. Um, but I think for students who are, you know, really, um, it's students at all levels, whether, you know, students a C student or an A plus student, whether they're AP, college prep, um, whatever level of students at, I think this is the most fair way to do it for all of them. Uh, so if they are engaged, they are gonna get credit for the work they do, the teacher then they would get, the letter grade they would get would be the highest grade that they had term one, two or three. All right, any questions on uh, term four? All right, Mr. Superintendent, I I, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Minicello, were you? No. Nope. Oh, okay. All right. So um, do we, I, I assume we would need a, a vote on this? Yeah, like, yeah, a motion just to approve this grading policy. All right. Okay. Motion sure. to approve. Second. All right. Motion made by Ms. Sullivan, properly seconded by Mr. Minicello. Um, I'll call the roll. Um, the chair, Mr. Sullivan? Yes. And uh, I'm the, the vice chair is a yes as well. Uh, Ms. Asak? Yes. Ms. Mendez? Yes. Mr. Minicello? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Okay. 
And the grading policy motion is approved unanimously. So um, I'll let um, uh, June jump in for the elementary um, grading as obviously, you know, elementary is a little bit different from grade six to 12. So I'll, I'll let June uh, explain that process. Great, thank you. Good evening, everybody. So Good evening. Good evening. Obviously, we have a different approach to assessing students at the elementary level. Um, first of all, it's based in the understanding that our report cards are standards-based, and so they're not grade-dependent. Instead, our assessment is meant to evaluate the student progress toward the mastery of specific standards. Um, we've been meeting about this for of days now and we believe that teachers will be able to make reasonable a reasonable assessment about where students were on March 12th when the student when the school closure began so third quarter report cards will really remain the same much like um, you know the middle and the high school but for fourth quarter that would obviously be a lot more difficult um, the superintendent mentioned that the state has provided us some more guidance and really what they've done is they've pointed us toward a more specific focus on the power standards and so at this point our district curriculum team and that's really k-12 is working on looking at the resources and aligning them toward that goal so in thinking about that and the way it impacts elementary level, we believe that instead of asking teachers to um, assess the mastery of the standards, we'd like them to use a rubric. And really we're looking at simplifying the report card and not having a fourth quarter report card at the elementary level, but instead, and we've already started to do this. And again, Ethan's been helping us with this but still using Infinite Campus and creating a rubric, a rubric that would allow us to um, assess the degree to which students have engaged with the content. Because what we're thinking is that that best supports our goal, which is really monitoring students' ongoing opportunities for learning. So we would have ratings that are that reflect kind of the way we assess students now, but instead the language would look more like, and again, we're building the rubric, um, it would be highly engaged, sometimes engaged, or limited engagement, and then a comment section. And so one of the reasons that we think that this would be beneficial is that it would give next year's teachers the opportunity to have some insight into the degree to which students were able to continue their learning during this closure and give them a starting point for addressing the potential gaps in student, in student learning. And so as we think about what are, the, what are the power standards that we're going to be focused on for the next really six weeks, if students have had limited engagement with that type of content, then that would be something we'd be able to focus on um, when we come back in the fall. And that's my hope that we will be back in the fall. So, and, and even if we're designing any summer content, we would really be able to target kids that we can see that were really maybe not as engaged as we'd like them to be. So that's really the plan for the elementary level. So third quarter, we would go basically um, about it as business as usual, but fourth quarter, we wouldn't have a traditional report card and instead we would create, and we're in the process of creating a rubric that would address the level of engagement. I have a question. Mrs. Sullivan. <clears throat> Hi, June. Hi, um, how are you? Good, how you doing? Great, thanks. Good. Um, so this would also help the teacher. The term four that you spoke of would also help the teacher to meet the students where they are because they've had so much time off. It would show them where the kids really are. Yes, especially okay. because of the guidance around focusing on the power standards. And I mean, all along our curriculum teams have been designing content that meet the standards. I, oh, that's what always what our objective is. But now right. what the state has done is said, okay, now we're asking you to really focus on these standards 
And because of that, we think that this approach would just allow us to better monitor the degree to which we're right. engaged. I mean, it's not going to give us other than comments as far as whether or not the student mastered that standard, but at least we'd know whether the kids or the students were involved and engaged in the, in the work. Yeah, I think it sounds like a great idea. Good job. Right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just wanted to jump in and comment again. I think it, it sounds like a well thought out and, and you know, best way to uh, do things given our, our situation. Uh, to the point that Mr. Minicello made when we were talking about high school and middle, um, has there been any thought um, of if, you know, what about younger grades in September if we can't go back or had to have less kids in school? Like, have we gotten to that point or are we still just kind of trying to get ourselves through uh, this year and I mean, Mike, uh, good, you're, you're good, on mute. Oh, yeah, you. I got it. Thanks. Um, good question. There's been there's been all kinds of talk uh, amongst the superintendents and amongst ourselves and the executive team. Um, there's a possibility where, um, you know, if kids are going back to the same school, obviously they're not going from grade six to seven or if they're not going grade eight to nine, um, they could start the first month, maybe the first six weeks in the in the last year's class uh, with mm -hmm. the teacher they had last year and um, before moving up to the next grade. Again, that would, that's talk of the state maybe doing something like that. Um, so that's a consideration. Um, so if I was in the fourth grade um, at the George, I would go back to my fourth grade teacher maybe for four weeks or so. And then, you know, then I would go to, um, you know, move up to the fifth grade. Though that's, that has been bandied about with the, by the Department of Ed. Again, that's something that, you know, we've talked about you know, there's obviously work that would have to go around that with, you know, with teachers and with Kim and how that would look. So you're right. There's just a lot of, there's a lot of moving parts, but those are all the kind of things that we're thinking about is how to get kids in, back into school. And not only that, I mean, it is something to say that as a student going back with the teacher that they know um, for the first few weeks of school, but also help kids socially and emotionally that, you know, it, it's something that's familiar. They get to see the kids that were in class last year. Might take some anxiety away. So those are the kind of things being talked about. Okay, and we would just do like a normal start for K and 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 even for our pre K no, program. No, that that could change. Um, that also could change. I mean, um, there could be a different start dates for certain grades. Um, mm -hmm. the, the Department of Ed is also talking about that. I think we'll. As we move forward with these committees, um, again, I'm part of the urban superintendent group. Uh, as these committees move forward into um, the middle to end of May, uh, I'm sure we'll have more information. I'm sure Kim will have more information because the MTA is going to be involved in this as well. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of different um, conversations going on and how the fall will look. And, and not only that, it's going to start with summer first. What's, what was the summer going to look like? And how are we going to support the kids throughout the summer? And that's all kids. Um, I think any, any student or parent that wants their, their child to, to participate in the summer program should be, obviously, that's got to be something that we have. Um, you know, if they're, usually we have an average of, you know, take it, send a day out of it. We usually have an average of probably about 1,000 kids, 1,500 kids in summer programs. But, you know, this year, like Tom said, that's why it's important to know about the money you know, we could have 10,000 kids in, in summer programs, whether it's online and part of it, you know, physically being present. So those are the things we all have, you know, that's going to be hashed out over the next, probably the next six weeks. Great. Mr. Minicello, do you have a question? Um, yeah, uh, I think this is something that we've <laughs> talked about uh, in, in a prior meeting. And, and also um, we've talked about it prior years. And I think Ms. Uh, Mrs. Saber um, recognizes that, and that is that we need to have um, continuity of curriculum at, at, at all the grade levels so that, I don't know if you remember this, but in one of the meetings we had uh, online here, in, in a very unsophisticated way, I was trying to make the point that we needed to have kids you know, doing similar work at similar levels so that we know where the kids are similarly at 
um, when they go back so that so that we have sort of a, a yardstick to test these kids and know we are in fact they're at and how many kids need to be in some sort of remedial program over the summer and you know or the beginning of the school year and, and, and that's and I've talked about this for years you know even going back when I think John Jerome was interim superintendent that it's so important we were at the time you know, because John obviously came from the middle schools we talked about the middle schools and it was that you know the Davis uh the time the Davis middle school kids you know were sort of doing one thing and certainly the Pluff another and West another and South doing their own thing and it, it really is time I think that this district needs to have continuity of curriculum so that if a kid gets transferred from uh let's say East middle school and they move over to towards south or west or what have you that you know they're, they're going to be having a curriculum that they they, they know where the kids going to be picking up now certainly some classes might be a little more advanced but at least it's the same it's the same same roadmap it's just you might be at the you know at one exit a little quicker than or a little slower but you know there really needs to be i think some you know we need to take inventory now where our kids are at in all of our schools at every level and and, and make sure that they're they're on the same you know they're on the same road so to speak and you know um and, and again I, I, we've talked about it over for years and we you know i think we talked about it a little online here i know mrs saber oh, um, has mentioned yeah. it too mr minicello that is something that we talk about a lot and and we at the sub at the um school committee retreat this past february we did a lot of talking about that at the um we had the middle school content leads they are presenting. And what we talked about is exactly what you just framed. And that is that is the direction that we're moving toward. We've made some significant progress. Uh, we're not quite there yet, but we're on our way. So we have a consistent science program at the middle school level, Amplify Science now. We're moving toward a math program. We're hoping to be able to make a decision by the end of this year. Um, we're looking at two English ELA programs at the middle school level for next year, and we've actually settled on a social studies resource for next year. So by the end of next year, um, it certainly was our goal to have consistent resources in the major content areas at the middle school level. Um, Great. So hopefully this budget doesn't prevent us from doing that. So now that's another consideration that could impact our decision making. And I, and I think you're going to see that probably um, some recommendations around curriculum obviously will come out of um, the district review that was done um, about two months before, about a month before we closed. So um, that probably, I don't know if that will be delayed or not, but that's scheduled to come out in August. Um, but, you know, I'm sure we'll see some recommendations from the, the district review around that as well. Yeah, great. Well, that is, There's anyone yeah. that can whip everyone in shape? It's Mrs. Saber. That's for oh, sure. Thank you, Mr. Minicello. I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> Absolutely. But all of those resources are all um, very highly rated, <clears throat> by the way. So we've been really, um, I think, diligent about making sure that any resource that we're even considering in the district has already been rated by ed reports and recommended by the department and at the federal level. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other comment? All right. Um, let's see. All right. So is it if, if there's nothing else on the elementary grade policy? Uh, we can move on to uh, new business. Is there any new business to come? Um, Mr. Thomas. Hi. So um, this is going to be a little bold. So um, <laughs> so I, I would like, and I've talked this over with uh, Dr. Murray and um, Dr. Cobbs. Um, so I really think we should schedule a senior week. Um, I've looked at other districts, and, and this is, again, for our every hope that people could be physically together. Um, and I would like to plan a senior week for July 27th to August 2nd, which would include activities like uh, possibly some kind of a, a dance slash cookout um, for, for, for students, even if it has to be done in a smaller scale and done over a series of nights that week. Um, I'm looking at a graduation weekend um, for the first and second, which would be 
um, spread out, obviously, by building. Uh, be able to, from, for an example, the yellow building graduates at 11 o'clock to 1230, and then the green building comes in at 2 o'clock to, to 4, and then the next day, the next two buildings do it. And, and Friday night, the Edison Academy can graduate, depending on the numbers. Um, and then the Huntington and the, and the Keith as well. Um, where we would have it keep the field set up. Um, we usually have about 220 graduates per house. Um, at the stadium, we, be, we would be able to spread them out on the field. Obviously, we would all be spread out on the stage. Um, we could have students just come up and obviously would have a nice table set up. And if we couldn't obviously have that close contact, they could pick their diploma up. But obviously, um, we could limit to four tickets um, per, uh, if the guidelines don't us allow more than that, where we would have plenty of room to have people spread out in the stands. I just think it's really important for us to put something on the books. Uh, obviously, we would put uh, as a disclaimer, if we put a flyer out, that this would all would be uh, contingent on what the CDC um, state guidelines and also local guidelines, because obviously Brockton's in a different spot compared to Athol. Um, you know, so um, I would put you know, would put that disclaimer on saying that if guidelines don't allow this, then we would obviously earlier than that July date move to a virtual graduation. But I, I think it's important for us and I think it's important for parents and for the seniors um, to know that we're, we have this plan in place and we actually have something in place to do something physically. Um, but also we would come back and do something virtually earlier if um, guide, guidelines don't change and allow us to have those kind of um, you know, large gatherings. I mean, a lot of the small districts have, have scheduled their graduations for around this, this weekend, uh, the, you know, late July. And again, those usually graduate between two and 300 kids. So if we look at doing it by house and spreading it out, um, over a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I'm hopeful that's something we might, the goal is we'd be able to do that. So I think it's important to at least plan it and schedule it, and we see what happens over the next six to eight weeks and where it goes. I just wanted to get the committee's thought on that. I think that's a wonderful idea. Um, you know, we've all talked in several past meetings of what are we going to do for the seniors? They're obviously losing so many um you know, big events um, uh, for their senior year. Um, you know, so hopefully, uh, you know, I would I would support or support this and and getting something on the books and hopefully we'll be able to actually do it. But I think you know, I think you're right. It makes sense to to get it on the books um, and 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 I guess cross our fingers that things go the way we need them to to be able to actually do it. Uh, any other comment? I think I saw Ms. Asak. Go ahead. Uh, I think it's a wonderful idea. As long as we can do it safely um, to keep them safe and everyone else safe. But I mean, they have so many milestones that they're missing out on this year. And um, I think they would be happy to hear that, you know, we there's something planned, um, you know, and hopefully we can move forward and get that done for them. <clears throat> but um, definitely. And, and I agree with breaking down the buildings. Because, I mean, we do have a huge graduating class, um, unlike other high schools in our area. So um, I think that's a wonderful idea. I was thinking about that myself. How could we do this safely? So doing a whole week of um, festivities and a couple of days of graduation is probably the safest way to do it with our volume as far as our graduates. But um, you, you definitely have my support. I just want to say, um, I think it's a great idea. I just think we shouldn't announce it until we're sure of it because we shouldn't get their hopes up. And then if it has to be where locally or state, we're not continuing to have these big um, events. I think it's better to wait off until we announce it to the students themselves. Like, I think it's good to plan, put it in the books, but not tell them yet until we're sure. Mr. Minicello? Yeah, uh, I agree um, that we should plan something. Um, and, and like Ms. Mendez, I wouldn't want to get everyone's hopes up and then have them come crashing down. But 
I think you can, we can start thinking about or brainstorming about different options. Um, I mean, I've heard different um, uh, proposals with other communities about having um, people uh, drive up in a car and pass someone their diploma. I've heard other communities talk about similar to um, some of the, um, actually the presentation that we have at the high school uh, for the kids who, um, to, uh, uh, Abigail Adams scholarships that you could have for every student, perhaps that have their picture and um, something um, that they submit about themselves um, up on you know, a big screen and broadcast that over cable. We, we, could, we can plan for, I guess, uh, two things, a, a, a presentation or something if we have to keep to guidelines and people cannot be physically there, but do it somehow, um, you know, visually video with a video or something like that. Or if, if, if things get um, loosened up, you know, something a little more you know, intimate or present. But, but I, I think we should plan on one where, like one plan where, hey, if you can't be together, we're gonna try to do something, you know, um, you know, broadcast it over cable or, or do something with regard, you know, a student and their picture or graduation picture or whatever, you know, and then something a little, you know, looser. But, but again, I would keep the planning stages right now to ourselves um, so that we don't disappoint kids, you know, uh, because, you know, they're having a horrible year as it is. I, I, I hate to, you know, crush them again when, if they're hoping, oh man, you know, at the end of uh, July or beginning of August, we're gonna get together with our friends and, and then it just can't happen, you know, so. Uh, again, I'd, I'd have like a couple of options, an intimate thing and then something sort of virtually, you know, where, where kids are recognized and, you know, and do it sort of technologically as opposed to in person, you know. Mr. Sullivan? Yes, Mike, I just wanted to say, as bad as times are right now, everything we're going through, that I think you have a great idea, in my opinion, that's fabulous. Thank you. I have a question. How are we foreseeing to make the dance and cookout happen? It would be obviously um, planned over a series of nights and it would have to obviously be what the guidelines say, but it would again be broken down by building. Um, and it even beyond that, it could be have to be broken down even more. So if we had a cookout, it might be, it might have to be half the yellow building, you know, alphabet and then the, the other half depending on the size um each building uh, it's about 225 like uh, dr murray can can chime in usually between 200 230 graduates per building if we talk about the high school um, um addison's usually around could be three to four hundred so that would have to be done a certain way huntington and, and keith are already small um but would actually just kind of plan these things around like the, a lot of the smaller high schools around us, like in East Bridgewater, West Bridgewater, that really have small graduating classes, we would make the numbers work um, depending on what the guidelines say. So it could be a cookout or dance, but it could be, again, over three or four nights and it would be um, on a smaller scale, but some kind of a celebration. Okay. Thank you. I, I, think, the I think to plan this is good. I just think I would hold back on announcing things and, you know, and again, have a couple of different contingencies depending on, you know, how things loosen up or if they loosen up, you know, what you can do, you know? Yeah. So, so they might be like you said, uh, you know, plan A, plan B, plan C, plan, plan D and, you know, plan E, who knows, but if things are really the way they are today, I think we should plan to do something. It's just a matter of, you know, what we can do to keep kids safe and, and it basically it would be a sort of a, it would have to be a virtual thing of some you know some sort absolutely you know? but, i think but, mr manicello you're right have you know, multiple uh, again, plans yeah there, there needs to there needs to be more than just plan a and plan b i think a b c d and e you know um right you know and, and like you said you know pretend that we're a small district and it's like you know 200 200 or so kids to a, a graduation and, you know but but i would do i would have a plan a through you know e or something like that you know uh, Mayor, did you have your 
Yes. I mean, I, I, we owe it to these kids to uh, support them, show our admiration for their hard work, but I do want to caution everybody. So uh, it shouldn't be date specific, right? It should be data driven. Uh, I was on a call with Marty Walsh and 13 mayors Sunday night, and some of the mayors want to start everything back to normal. Uh, the mayor in Boston said he had 300 cases over the weekend here in Brockton. We had hundred cases over the weekend. So we're not out of the woods here. I mean, people are dying. So um, I think anything that we do and we, we have to do something, but we have to do it in a tentative way. Uh, I agree with Tom and, and Cynthia. Um, you don't want to get anybody's hopes up. They've already been dashed so much. Um, but I'm really, really cautious about something like a dance where, you know, physical social distancing will be out the window. So again, we should kick the tires, think about many, many different ways to honor and respect and show really our, our pride for these kids. Uh, but we just have to do it in a healthy way. And, and I applaud uh, the superintendent for thinking outside the box. And, you know, we'll work together as a collective uh, elected officials to, uh, to come up with the right thing. Um, superintendent Thomas, why maybe, because I don't, I don't think we're at a point on anything where we would have to vote on anything, but maybe, you know, for the next meeting, you could, you know, work with, um, you know, uh, Dr. Murray and, and others that would be involved in coming up with a couple of these possible plans that of, of how we could like, and like Mr. Minicello said, uh, an, an A, B, C, and, e, and maybe even an E, you know, a D or an E option, but multiple options of, of how we can, uh, you know, offer the, the, our, our seniors some, some opportunity to, to celebrate their accomplishments. But um, I think you're right, we'd have to hold off on, on dates. Uh, but, you know, maybe for our next, you know, we can have another policy meeting where you could present that to us. Would that make sense? Absolutely. I just want to, because um, there are going to be a lot of parents that are going to be asking and sending you questions. I just think that I think we should we should be able to tell them that, you know, there's going to be something, whether it's going to be virtual or physical, and it's going to be towards the end of July. Um, you know, because otherwise, if they, you know, if if. I'm just saying, because a lot of people are just going to, you know, they're going to want something virtual sooner so they can get their diplomas sooner and want something. Again, we usually, this year we were scheduled to graduate on June 6th. So I don't want to wait too long with getting information out to, to seniors and parents because Cliff is getting a thousand questions about it. So is, you know, Dr. Cobb. So, you know, I, I, I'd like to put, again, not saying that that's why we were, I was pushing it out as long as we could mm -hmm. into July. And maybe we do, we put out two things, a, a, gradu, a virtual graduation week and a physical graduation week, and we back them up. So maybe for like sure. the virtual, the, you know, we would shoot for the best. Maybe we do a week earlier for the physical and we can't do that. It goes to the July 27th week. Uh, just something that you know, again, I, I'm fine with not putting out something now, but I don't know how much longer we're going to be able to get away with not putting something out there. Well, maybe we look at and 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 start to plan for a virtual graduation in June. I don't think it's realistic to think we could do anything but virtual um, in the month of June. Um, so I, maybe maybe we take this in two steps in the more short term. I mean, if the committee is comfortable. <laughs> The, the superintendent could come back, work on a plan for a virtual graduation at some point in June, come back to the committee with that. Let's get that dealt with. And then we could plan for something um, different, um, you know, late summer um, that, that might hopefully at that point give us the ability to do something, even if it's smaller groups in person. Does that sound like a reasonable way to approach or? I think, it's cool. I think it's cool to consider the drive up in a car. Um, if that's something feasible and if that's something that we see that families, you know, have the transportation to do, but I think that would be, I don't know what we think about that, but that option too, I did like that Tom brought up. Yeah. And we could do it. They could come in one entrance to the high school, right? Come down and, and go right out the other end. You know, we'd have to obviously plan for the logistics of that, but I think that, you know, we could just certainly make that option work too. Um, right. I think it's time to brainstorm a little bit, but right. I, I would just be a little bit hesitant on giving a date. And, and, you know, if people are calling, I would basically just put it on, you know, the, the, the pandemic that, you know, we're, we're waiting for some guidelines. We are in the process of trying to plan things. And, you know, right now we're planning on, 
um, you know, sort of a virtual situation, but if something changes, then we're gonna, we're also thinking about other options, but I wouldn't, I, w I wouldn't, I wouldn't announce, I wouldn't want to announce specifics, but just tell people that, you know, we, you know, we, we are thinking about the different options, but it's all, it's all like the mayor said, data driven uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and what, uh, you know, we're allowed to do safely and when we're allowed to do it per the governor, you know, and, and you know, so, so I, I wouldn't have a problem telling parents that at all. If someone's calling yeah. up me. But I, I just, I think, I think we do have to start thinking about these things. I think we do have to start brainstorming. Um, and I, you know, I would start, plan A would be to me the most conservative route, the way things are today. If we had to have a graduation today, how would we do it today, you know? And then, you know, just, you know, a little bit, you know, easing up a little bit, easing up and then, you know, but I know it sounds tough, but, it's just a bad situation. Yeah. No, you're right. I mean, what is so, and, and Miss Asak, I saw your hand one second. I mean, maybe we should talk about like, so what does a virtual graduation look like? I mean, is it just something where BCA is there and we're reading the names off and the speeches happen, but the room is basically empty, you know, and the students are watching from home. Is that, you know, the kind of format that we're talking about, just kind of throwing that out there? Um, yeah, that would that would be what it would look like. Yeah, we would probably be there with maybe, you know, some kind of stage and then a large screen set up where it would show every graduate. And then obviously it would be broadcast on BCA and then running streaming also on the website. Um, you know, and then maybe even the student speaker would be there. Um, those are the kind of things we'd have to plan out. Obviously, social distancing. And that was one, you know, the one, um, again, depending on what they allow us to do this summer, what the guidelines are, you know, the one benefit of having the size of the stadium that we have, you know, it's, you know, it would, you know, if we are allowed to come together, it'd be much easier to do a, you know, per building to be able to spread way out, even on the field. So, but again, I think you're right. We'll have to do, we'll, we'll definitely have a plan in place for a virtual graduation. And if we're allowed to in late July, um, do something outside, we can approach that as well. I mean, in, in, if it's a, if it's a virtual, I mean, you could also have, um, run clips, uh, of, of the yearbook. I mean, you know, that, that, yep. you know, the, mm -hmm. what the yearbook, um, activities that went on in the year, you know, um, things that were positive and they actually got in, you know, sporting events, you know, band events, things like that, to, you know, sort of spruce it up a little bit. Um, uh, you know, actually run little, you know, blips of film of, you know, the different highlights of, you know, perhaps, you know, productions, you know, theater stuff, you know, sporting stuff. I mean, it doesn't have to just be a very boring thing, but. Absolutely. Uh, and again, I, I, I applaud you. I mean, I, I would love to plan a, a barbecue. Right now, barbecue sounds darn good to me, you know, but, but <laughs> I would hate to have the kids. Oh, yeah, they're going to plan a barbecue for us in July. And then guess what? No barbecue, you know, it's like, oh, you're kidding me, you know, but, you know, I mean, just have different plans, but I wouldn't announce, I wouldn't announce them. I would just say right now we're planning for our virtual graduation. That's what I would say right now. And, but, you know, if we can, depending on if things loosen up because of the information and data we get, then we can, you know, accordingly make some adjustments, you know, but we have to do it safe. And I don't know. I mean, it's tough. There's no the easy yeah, answer. It's, it's not a great situation to be in, that's for sure. Right. But you know, unfortunately, everyone in the state, you know, in this country, is in the same boat. It's a matter of how we get creative and have, try to have a little fun you know, with the tools that we currently have at our disposal, safely. You know, so. Miss Asak, you've been waiting very patiently to comment. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I definitely. Um, I would definitely go with the virtual graduation one. I mean, that would be if we do elaborate and make it more into something where we highlight their years at Brockton High on top of their graduation, it'd be a nice memento for them to always have go a little extra for them, especially where we haven't been able to do much um, given what's going on with the world. And then we have pulled off graduations um, for years and they run so smoothly given the amount of graduates that we have. So if we had to pull something together last minute, if say something happens and all of a sudden we are allowed to have um, 
some numbers. At least have your plan B. Plan A, plan B, and as Mr. Minicello said, C, D, E, and F. Um, but at least give them something to look forward to. Uh, do we have a committee that's working on different things for the seniors? Oh, um, yeah. yeah. Dr. Murray I've has seen a team. Lawn signs. I mean, there's lawn. so much going on with other towns and cities. You know, they, they were doing like lawn signs with pictures of the, the graduates and um, yeah. so, they were lining them up. I mean. So lawn signs just, are ordered. They're ordered. They'll be in this week. Um, we obviously, because of our numbers, couldn't do pitches on them, um, but also uh, senior T-shirts are ordered, um, and also uh, Dr. Cobbs, Cindy Burns, and Jay Lanner are doing that for the Huntington as well. So um, we're hoping that the T-shirts and um, the lawn sign should be in probably this week, T-shirts next week, and then we will deliver to every student's uh, senior's home. Um, the lawn sign and the t-shirt um, and that's all seniors um, so yeah that's been done obviously East Bridgewater has their lawn signs now because there's about 120 graduates we've audited a thousand of them so it's taken sign design a little bit longer to make these for us um, and then there's obviously we're printing a thousand t-shirts for them and the same with um, um, the Edison and the Huntington and the in the key so as soon as all that's ready it will be delivered. And I know Dr. Murray's working closely with the Dean. Uh, he's working with uh, Bob Hogan, Sarah Richards, Vinnie Macrina, Matt Cunningham, and they're putting all kinds of uh, videos together of the drama club, the chorus, the music, the band, uh, concert choir. They're all working together to put a bunch of things together. I know Dr. Murray's been planning that um, ever since we found out about the extended closure. Uh, last Tuesday. And Cliff is on the call if he wants to jump in. Dr. Murray. No. Yep. No, we've oh. uh, we've been talking. We, we actually, throughout the course of the year, do a lot of video projects anyway. So uh, this is, I think, if we go to the video uh, graduation, which I like that idea, the virtual, we can definitely incorporate a lot of the stuff that we have uh, from that. We're also talking to the businesses in the community that have digital signs. Uh, with Jess Hodges, we created a digital um, uh, sign for our seniors that will be displayed. We're negotiating with the Holiday Inn, CVS, a sign design with their electronic billboard on 24. It's uh, the class picture where they form the 20, the two X's, which uh, kind of is pretty much most of our seniors. And so we're hoping to get those pictures up electronically throughout the community as well. There's a nice little thing uh, with that from, from the staff. So we've been, uh, you know, we've been at work. Uh, I liked the idea of trying to do something um, at the end of July. We've also talked about, you know, hopefully we have a fall where maybe we, if we can't do, a party per se for these kids, maybe homecoming or that Wednesday before Thanksgiving. We rent the venue and we let that class come back together. We know the kids would be back from college and no, it's not going to replace the prom or, you know, those kinds of things, but it'd be a way for us to just, again, recognize the heartbreak that they've suffered and um, might be a nice way for them to start the holidays. So we've got a lot of different ideas that we're talking about in terms of, uh, a way to recognize them and then hopefully at some point let them come back together as a class and kind of celebrate. Mm -hmm. Mayor Sullivan. Yeah, just to follow up on Dr. Murray, uh, bear in mind again, the city has the ability under a license agreement uh, with the two other digital billboards on 24, the one at the Holiday Inn at the Westgate Mall and then the other one, not signed as the other one at the uh, uh, Belmont Street 123 exit. Uh, they have to allow the city of Brockton and the school committee to utilize that. So oh, great. yeah, whatever we need to do, we'll do that. I've already used it many times. Um, the thing that I, I wanted to share and just thinking outside the box, I participated today uh, with some city councilors and law enforcement and police and fire and DPW. We did, this is the second time we did a thank you parade. Uh, today we did it at the Brockton hospital uh, and we did it at good Sam a couple weeks ago and it was unbelievable. It was a car parade. Um, it was probably, I don't know, 50 or 60 cars, but the doctors, the techs, the custodians, the cafeteria workers, the nurses, the PAs, they stood out, they had their masks on uh, and they clapped for the people, you know, and, and it was a vice versa. We could do that where 
the high school kids, the seniors are allowed to even decorate their cars like we all did when we graduated. They can come right down Forest Ave, teachers, uh, and, and all of us could be there, social distancing with signs just to make it something special. I'll tell you right now, I got a many, many calls today from the nurses at Brockton Hospital really touched. And it's something that uh, was done to meet the standards of the health guidelines. And we could do something like that for the kids. So there's a lot, I think, as Tom said, you know, A, B, C, D, E. But there's a lot that we can do that will uh, really make them feel special. And it's not perfect, but it's something that we could do together. And, and I wouldn't even be opposed to if, if it has to be put off till next year, having two graduations. I mean, having a, the graduates of 2021, if you can do it safely, but also bringing back the 2020s. I mean, doing something like, like Dr. Murray said, you know, for homecoming, but I wouldn't mind having two graduations next year. And, and you know, right. even even though they get their diplomas this year, inviting people back that they would like to actually walk across the stage. Yeah. I mean, depending on depending on the numbers or depending on how many people would be interested in that. I mean, so right. and, and these are, this is you know this is unprecedented. So yeah, to me everything's on the table really. Agreed. Any other thoughts or discussion at this point? Okay. And the only other thing I, 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 I'll, I'll I add. I compliment the superintendent for thinking outside the box. I mean, you know, you know his his heart is in the right place. You know, yes. and we all we, we all would love to have a loosen things up. You know, and we want it sooner rather than later. I just I just think we have to you know sort of go from a conservative route to a more you know you know sort of you know social you know that that, that things are safer you know before we can commit to doing something. That the kids are going to get all excited about and hyped up about, and then crush their crush their feelings and their hopes, you know. Right, we play that one by ear, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Superintendent, were you about to? Yeah, I just um, there's been a lot of questions, and I'll and we'll put this in information that the principals will call out um, when they call out about the grading this week. We can also have them call out about lockout. People have been asking about getting lock lock is cleaned out. Obviously, we're not ready. For that at all uh, guidelines that aren't going to allow that right now but obviously we do have a plan in place already of how students will be able to come into school uh, obviously in very small groups when it's allowed to collect their personal belongings but again that's something is probably going to take us into the summer um, it's just right now it's just not going to um, be allowed but I'll make sure parents know that because uh, there has been a lot of questions about people coming in getting their personal items out of lockers but Obviously, we we have large schools, so it's not an easy thing to undertake, and we'll have to do that in a very organized and safe manner when it's allowed. Um, and it would take us obviously a few weeks to make sure we get through every student. Um, you know, West Junior High has close to 800. Obviously, the high school has 400. Uh, you know, there's a you know there's a lot of kids in our schools, so that would have to be planned out and very very safe. Um, but again, that's we're not even close to that point now. As you know, the governor extended us out to May 18th today, um, but there's also there's local guidelines the mayor puts in place because Brockton is not like um, other cities and towns. So um, obviously um, our guidelines here could be different as well when we get to May 18th. So right now it's really premature to, um, to talk about people coming into the buildings to clean out lockers. That, that will happen eventually, but um, it's not gonna happen anytime soon. Right. Ms. Asak. Um, I just wanted to go back to um, what Mr. Minicello had just mentioned. I think if we let them know, let our seniors know, and actually it's really the parents too. I have more parents that have reached out to me that are heartbroken. They've waited their whole life to see their child receive their mm -hmm. diploma. But if we let them know that we will have a graduation, whether it's this year or next year, I think that would make them feel a little better on top of the virtual graduation just so they have that moment to wear that cap and gown and whether or not they're, they're not gonna be receiving their actual diploma, but we can do some other kind of a certificate. But I think if they know that we would actually have a graduation ceremony for them in the future, I think that would probably, you know, lessen the blow a little bit, um, knowing that they'll have a virtual one right now. And if, if we can't, then um, if we can't do anything later on in the summer, then definitely know that they'll have something in, in 2021. Um, I think a lot of them would probably feel a little better. Um, 
knowing that they'll have that opportunity to um, have an actual graduation ceremony. Yeah. All right, any other comment on this matter? Under new business. All right, I have one thing um, before we end, um, which I think will kind of end us on a, a positive note. Um, as the committee knows, and I know that you know there may be public viewing this, um, that the um, there was a publication, uh, k-12talk.com, that actually recognized and cited um, some of the things uh, they they did an article proactively building a rapid response team. And they looked at actually what we've been doing here in Brockton and how we've been handling this for our school district. And there's really one line there that I, I just kind of want to read for the public that I think sums up where everything has started from. Um, and they say, so one of its core values and a top priority of its superintendent, Michael Thomas, is to support the physical and social emotional well being of its students. Then they go on to, you know, discuss some of you know, what we put in place and how we've done it. Um, and um, this discussion even more so just solidifies why something I, I said to Mike um, the other night that, uh, you know, honestly, is, as much as it is difficult, I'm sure, for to be at the helm right now, um, to have a, you know, to be the superintendent of any district, um, I can't think of anybody I would, I would rather have, um, you know, leading the district right now than, than our superintendent. So um, I just wanted to share that and, and also, you know, give, um, you know, that feedback to Mike and uh, as well. I, again, I tough time to, uh, to be, you know, uh, the superintendent of, 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 our, of our district right now, but I couldn't think of anybody else. I, want. Uh, I just have one question. Yep. Mayor Sullivan and then Mrs. Sullivan. Well, no, I just wanted to share with the school committee members. I called the superintendent uh, last week. I came up with two ideas. Mike supports it a thousand percent. The first one was to uh, put uh, a message about the city curfew, 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. and also physical distancing of no less than six feet. I wanted it uh, in multiple language on the forest staff, uh, digital board at Brockton High, Jess Hodges, jumped on that. I thank her. I thank Mike. And then Ken Thompson and Jamie Domestico. I wanted them all the uh, billboard uh, in the boards and the placards around the city at all the schools. Uh, some of them have to do the old lettering uh, and they did that. I, and I applaud Mike and his team for that. And then the next thing I said is I want to hand out in multiple languages, handouts with Chartwells when the lunches will be given out and the breakfast will be given out. We're working with DPH right now. Uh, Jess Hodges and, and Kerry Richards, my chief of staff, have been in constant contact. Uh, the documents are, are sent over to the school side today. Uh, they've already been approved by the state. So I want to thank the superintendent. That's going to be a game changer, uh, and it's a no-brainer to do. So, Mike, I publicly want to thank you. And uh, anybody watching here uh, that does take advantage of the, the, the lunch and the, and the breakfast, you'll be getting a written document that just explains again the best guidelines to help us get through this pandemic. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. Um, Mrs. Sullivan. Yes, I just have a question for Superintendent Thomas. So on the laptops, we have basically 6,000 laptops out. Would we ask for those back before the summer or would we ask them back in September? I would probably look to, um, depending on um, what we need to do over the summer, would probably look to have them back sometime towards the end of August. Okay. Because we would want those students to stay engaged, um, obviously through our, um, you know, through our, um, you know, summer programs, which would be, you know, again, we, we talked about earlier online. And, but that, and it's a good question, uh, Mrs. Sullivan, because that's when we're really, uh, our friend Trip Jones can really help us out um, in getting the state um, with, they claim donations that they're going to be getting from Best Buy and Walmart and some big companies in Massachusetts. Um, and hopefully that we can get, you know, devices to, re, you know, obviously have these in place um, and, and, you know, be able to allow, you know, kids to keep the ones that we've given out and backfill them with um, ones that we can have um, provided by the Department of Education. So, you know, that's a good question, but I would probably think we'd have to keep them out there for the summer because of the summer programs and, and, and look for them to come back near the end of August before school starts. Right, I, I agree, yes. Thank you. 
Thank you. All right, Ms. Asak. Um, actually, Mr. Petronio, you might be able to answer this question. Um, I'm not sure if this is legit, but I had noticed um, there's a pandemic EBT and it says that any child in Massachusetts um, schools who's eligible for free and reduced lunch, they'll be getting a $5.70 per child for a total of $28.50. And it starts May 1st. Um, do we know anything about that? I guess they'll be getting them in the mail, but how does it work for Brockton where we have the free lunch for all our students? Joyce, I heard a little bit about that. I thought they give you the credit if you have an EBT card or they'll give you the direct deposit via a check, how they did well, the stimulus check. Yeah, what I'm looking on here says families who presently receive EBT cards will receive an increase of the 570 per child. I mean, I took a screenshot of it. Um, if yeah, I just want to make sure that people are, it says make sure you don't throw this away as they'll be mailing them out come May. Um, but I wasn't sure. I can send this over to Aldo. Um, yeah, actually we have this choice. We had um, Janice Johnson Pluma um, has been right on top of this. Um, and actually I will have her join us on uh, Tuesday night to explain how she's informing families about this and give us the exact details. Okay, yeah, because it, it talks about being undocumented and yep. things like that. So, okay, well, no, it starts have, May 1st, um, I believe. Yeah, Janice has been, uh, Aldo, I don't know where Aldo, Aldo was, he's, he and it was going back and forth on emails um, two days ago with Janice and um, she was actually advising other districts on, on how to do this. Um, so she's been right on top of that with the SNAP benefits and working with our families through the Parent Registration Center. Aldo, are you still there? Or are you celebrating your son's birthday? Not yet. It's Aldo's son's birthday today. So I, I just finished the ice cream cake. Don't, don't get between him and a Carvel cake. <laughs> He's in a, he, he just woke up from his sugar coma. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Does anyone else have a birthday today? <laughs> no, the... Our good friend, the mayor, was 50 yesterday, so we missed oh, his birthday yeah, by one day. 50 so. Yes. Happy um, birthday. Thank you. So, Aldo, hey, um, Mayor, just... Once, once you turn 50, it, it, it just gets better. Mike will tell you that. <laughs> oh, yeah. It just gets better once you turn 50. <laughs> you don't have any health issues. You just you, you just feel invigorated. Yeah. <laughs> so the coronavirus hits. Yeah, Aldo, yeah. Um, just quickly on what Janice was going back and forth with you on email yesterday about that, um, uh, the pandemic benefits EBT. for families. Yes. The pandemic, yep. Yes, they're, they're, they're looking at um, all the children and their families and seeing who they can offer additional funding to. So Janice is working on that and having families apply and they'll give them, looks like $200 a month more to help them through this period of time. So. Um, she's got her emails out, her contacts out, her information center has been notified. So as people are calling in, we're getting their numbers, giving them to, to Janice, and she's doing a great job. She's yeah, you know, and, and Janice has a team of the parent liaisons out of um, bilingual and out of uh, the parent information center to make sure the information and is actually phone calls that go out in all the languages. So I'll actually have Janice with us Tuesday night to, um, to talk about this with everybody. Okay, because Aldo, it said it started um, at the beginning of May, and that's just a few days away. So um, so you have to register for this? Because the way that I read it made it sound like if you receive free and reduced lunch, that you will automatically be getting the P pandemic EBT um, for the students, which is about 28, I think it was like 28.70, 28.50 a week. Right. So Correct. they... Because they're saying, make sure you don't throw it away. So I just wanted to make sure that families knew about it. Right. But they've, you have to register for it in order to get that. Correct? Exactly. They've asked us for our list of students. Since we are completely a free district, so we have the students that are what's considered directly certified. So the state knows who they are and they should get it. We have a large number of students that the state doesn't have directly certified. So those are the ones that we're trying to get information to the state on so that they'll be considered for this program. So and hopefully, okay. if they do get into the program, hopefully it'll help our direct certified number go up, which in turn helps our funding go up. 
Yeah, and no, I was curious how it worked where we're, all our students are receiving free lunch. So I wasn't sure how they um how they worked that up, number out. But oh, so that'll be at the um next Tuesday's meeting. Yeah, I'll have Janice um because I think we have a subcommittee meeting, um, finance sub before school committee that night. Uh, I'll have her come to that and make sure she she does a, um and talks about it, does a presentation for you. Great. Right. And hey, Mr. Um, uh, Mr. Diogosino, thank you, and Mr. Mayor, and everybody for your kind words. I appreciate it. But um, it was a rapid response. But without the, the, you know, all the work of um, your support of the school committee, the mayor, the city council, but also um, the executive team, none of this would have got done. Uh, and um, the cooperation uh, with Kim Gibson and the BEA, um, you know, everybody jumping into action to do what they best what they could do for the kids. Obviously. Um, the first phase with the with the food service workers and Tom Burke uh, and Shotwells, what they did, um, but also, you know, all of uh, the employees of the Brockton Public Schools. And I just want to thank them because, you know, we wouldn't be in that article if it wasn't for the team around us and um, the hard work of all our union members as well. So I appreciate everybody's support and um, I thank you for the kind words. Okay, any other uh, business to come before the policy subcommittee? All right, hearing none, do we have a uh, motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. All right. Second. Second. Motion to adjourn by Mrs. Sullivan, seconded by Mr. Minicello, and I will call the roll. Um, <clears throat> uh, the chair, Mayor Sullivan. Yes. Okay, Vice Chair, I vote yes. And Ms. Asak. Yes. Ms. Mendez. Yes. Mr. Minicello. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. And Mr. Sullivan. Yes. Superintendent. Yes. All right. Thank you, everyone. We are adjourned. <laughs>